I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we're going to say together the blessings over the Shabbat candles. beside you wish them a Shabbat Shalom if you know them and love them give them a hug and a kiss you may be seated our tefillah begins with a beautiful prayer on page 12 connecting with God as our Yedid Nefesh our beloved soulmate page 12 <laughs> each day of the week that we leave behind beginning with the words of Psalm 95 on page 22 Lechu Neranena Ladonai Lechu 
Light is sown for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Or is there a tzaddik? Of Psalm 98, the psalm that speaks about our ability to connect with God through music. Those of you who come regularly may notice the absence of our clarinet, 
this evening we miss Julio he will be here next week but Shabbat services are like a symphony in which we need every instrument to play its role and the most important instrument of that symphony is the voice that comes from our souls from the depth of our souls so we're going to replace the beauty of the clarinet with the beauty of our voices of our kavana of our intentions together with the keyboard and with Cantor Roger and with all of us in the middle of page 28 the psalm of music Zambru la Adonai Bechinor Lama Julia 
Shabbat into the sanctuary, into this night, and into our souls, L'cha on 38 and 40. And some of you may know that 12 hours ago I stepped off a plane directly from Tel Aviv together with Eric Browndorf, who's here. Just give a wave so they know who to wake up at Kiddush in an hour besides me. But, uh, as you know, on these solidarity missions, we're not there long enough to catch jet lag, just the sheer exhaustion and intensity and emotion from having been shoulder to shoulder with our brothers and sisters in our Holy Land and in our, in our homeland. And part of what I think we carry back with us on this mission that had us there when the 600th IDF soldier lost his life on the 180th day that the hostage is still being held in Gaza is really to come back, of course, with stories of resilience and inspiration and fellowship and love, but also just a broken heart carrying that pain. While we have continued to be so active and engaged and reflecting on each and every moment that has been happening in our Holy Land with our brothers and sisters there, I think what I may have forgotten in these last few months is just the pain, the heartache. That anguish has a way. It's natural, but it has a way of fading. And I think going back there and realizing how much of that grief and loss and trauma is still so raw, and so real and so ever-present is just yet another reminder about how much we have to continue to be doing everything we can each and every day with all of our hearts and all of our souls and all of our minds. So on this Shabbat, at this moment where we are blessed to be together, those of you who journeyed in January with Rabbi Guido on that meaningful mission or having your reunion tonight, and I know that you'll reflect meaningfully on that memorable time you had, but also striving to continue to carry that heartache because that serves for so many of us as a necessary motivation to do our parts to make sure that we overcome, that we prevail, and as they say in Israel, biyachad nenatzeach, that together we will overcome, we will be victorious. Join with us now as we welcome Shabbat into this space, into our hearts, into this night. 38 and 40, L'chadodi. L'chadodi, L'chadodi, Shabbat <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Shabbat is here, and as we just welcome Shabbat, we enter a different world, a different dimension. For the next 25 hours, our soul week will be expanded. In Hebrew, the word for soul is neshama, which shares the letter with the word neshima, which means breath, inspiration. It is customary at this moment to take a deep breath. we feel that our neshama is expanded we are more soulful for the next 25 hours as we become more aware of the dimension of the soul we try to remove ourselves from the world of the material from the world of having making building ambitioning we try to dwell a little bit in the world of being and as we inhabit that world of being, we feel that there are many reasons to be grateful for. Just look around, look at the person who is sitting next to you. The fact that you are here is already enough of a reason to express your gratitude. Even if you are going through difficult and dark times, for the next hour you will not be alone. And for that, 
we're grateful. That's why the psalm for Shabbat is a psalm of gratitude. We begin Shabbat not by asking, not by demanding, but by thanking God. It is good to thank you, O Lord, to sing praises to your exalted name. Page 42. Righteous will flourish like the palm tree, they will thrive like the cedar of Lebanon. Plant in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. Tzadik Tamari Prach. Yeah. 
אדיר במרו, אדוני. those among us in mourning and those observing your sight, page 124. Yitgadal v'yitgadash shemei rabba v'yalmad yivrach yirute v'yamlich malchute v'chayechon v'yameichon v'chaye v'chol beit Yisrael v'agala v'zman kariv imru amen. Yehei shemei rabba v'varach l'olam v'mei omaya yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitbar v'yitramam v'yitnaseh v'yitadar v'yitalei v'yitalal שמי לקודשה ברכו. לאלה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה, תוש ברכתה ונחמתה, ואמירן בעמה ואמרו אמן. יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיא, וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. The rest of us rise, the blessings of the Baruch Hu, page 50. going to lead us in a few seconds in the reading of the Shema Israel. He's going to be celebrating his Bar Mitzvah tomorrow evening at the end of Shabbat on a Shabbat Mincha service. We're very proud of him. He led us in prayer yesterday during his tefillin ceremony. We continue on page 52 with the blessing before the reading of the Shema Israel. <laughs> Paragraphs of the Shema, 56 and 58. 
Emahan tizkaro vasitem et kol mitzvotai viheitem kedoshim leloechem. Ani Adonai eloechem. Asher otsaiti etchem meeheretz mitzrahim lihiot lachem lehelohim. Ani Adonai eloechem. Adonai eloechem meeher. Turn to page 60 for the song of freedom, the song of redemption. The song that our ancestors sang when they crossed the Red Sea, led by Miriam and all the women who took their tambourines and led the nation in singing, Who is like you, O Lord, among the mighty? Micha Mocha Ba'elim Adonai, bottom of page 60. and shelter and peace in the night time and the darkness Hashkiveinu Hashkiveinu Adonai Eloeinu Leshalom Vehamideinu Malkeinu Lechaim Hashkiveinu Adonai Eloeinu leshalom vehamideinu malkeinu lechaim. Ushmo tzetenu uvoenu lechaim ushal and the sufferings and your hope to the forgotten and the lonely send your love to the confused and the distressed send your light to the weary and the wronged send renewed strength to the pursuers of justice and wisdom and faith to the seekers of peace send unwavering resolve to Jerusalem and its people send tranquility and joy to the world tonight send the blessings of Shalom
מצוקה שלומך, ובוז עלינו מצוקה שלומך, ברוך אתה אדוני הפורס, מצוקה שלום עלינו ועל עולמו ישראל ועל ירושלים אמן. ופרוס עלינו סוכת שלומך ופרוס עלינו סוכת שלומך to proclaim the sanctity of Shabbat with the words from the Torah. The children of Israel shall observe the Shabbat, maintaining it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. Page 64, Veshambro. Six Hebrew words 
that take us out of this physical world and bring us into the spiritual, intimate world, connecting with our Creator. Adonai Sfatai Tiftach. O Lord, we ask that you open up our lips so that our mouths may declare your praise. Top of 69. Yeah. 
אמן הוא עושה שלום מברומה, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, והנה רוח אמן. שבת שלום, אברואן. In about two weeks, a little bit more than two weeks, we'll be celebrating Pesach. You know, this Shabbat, it's called Shabbat Achodesh, the Shabbat in which we announce the beginning of the month of Nisan. We're getting close to the new moon, and that means it's time for cleaning, time for preparing our seder, the meal. At my home, at least, you can already smell that Pesach is coming. There's already preparations happening, and One of the key moments of the seder is right at the end of the seder in which, you know, when we believe that everything is done and we are ready to go to sleep, we start singing songs. And one of those songs is a song about numbers. Okay? In, in Hebrew, we sing it, Echad mi yodea. In English, who knows one? Yes, and in, in Ladino, cualo es el uno, we say, cualo es el uno. And we start counting numbers and trying to ascribe some meaning to each of the numbers. This week's Parsha is the only Parsha in the whole Torah that has the name of a number. It's called Parashat Shmini. Shmini comes from the word shom, Shmone, which means... Very good. You all went to Hebrew school. Shmini means the eighth. The eighth day. And you know... There are some numbers in the Jewish tradition that are very special. Three, for example, seven, 13, 18, 26. Eight is not a very special number. One, of course, echad. But eight is not a very special number. Perhaps the most important feature of number eight is that it comes right after seven. In seven days, God created heaven and earth. And the eighth day is the day in which we human beings started co-creating and perfecting the world together with God. Seven days is what it takes for a newborn baby boy to be ready for the eighth day in which his parents are going to enter him into the covenant. But I believe this year all these numbers take a different dimension. Because I think it's going to be... very difficult to be sitting at the seder and ask who knows seven and not to think on October 7th. Number seven, which used to be the lucky number for the Jewish people, became a nightmare on that October 7th, which was also seven days after the beginning of Sukkot. It was Shmini Atzeret, like today, Parsha Shmini eight. And the question is, what is eight then? If we know that seven is the number of tragedy, the number for the nightmare, the number for death, then eight ought to be the number of our response to that. Eight is the day after that fatidic seven in which we decided that we are not going to stand idle as our people are being threatened, are being killed, are being raped. But there's another thing that happens in this week's Parsha that I want to connect with number eight and the day after. This week's Parsha contains the description of another tragedy in the history of our people, the description of the tragedy of the inauguration of the Mishkan. After a long time of preparations, The Israelite nation is ready to dedicate the Mishkan. They throw parties for seven days. And on the eighth day, when the sons of Aaron, Nadav and Abihu, have to bring for the first time a sacrifice to the altar, a fire comes from heaven and divorces them, consumes them. And Aaron doesn't know what to do, doesn't know what to say. For the first time we see Aaron, remember Aaron was chosen to be one of the leaders of the Israelite nation because of his gift with words. Moshe was the one who didn't know how to speak, and Aaron's job was to be the spokesperson. 
the person who speaks. But the Torah describes Aaron as he witnesses the death of his two children and says, Ba'idom Aaron. And Aaron was silent. And from that silence of Aaron, we learn many things that found their way into the Jewish tradition even in our days. You know, people ask me very often when they have to go to a shiva, when they have to visit a family who is in mourning, Rabbi, what should I say? And you know what's the Jewish answer? You say nothing. You remain silent. Now, do we remain silent because silence is the only answer in the face of tragedy? I believe not. I believe that we remain silent because in the face of tragedy, there are much many other things that are effective to do other than talking. We have a tendency of solving all of our problems with words. And we forget that the only one who was able to create a reality with words was God, who created the world in seven days by speaking. The rest of us, words are not the most powerful tools when it comes to reacting to tragedy. Anyone who has ever gone through a Shiva knows that words are not the most helpful thing that people can bring you. Food, a hug, their hand, their presence. Making sure that someone picks up your kids at carpool in the school because you are not in the mood for that or receiving a card from someone who loves you. Someone who is there sitting in a corner saying, I'm here if you need me. That's much more powerful than thousands and thousands of words. Silence is not necessarily indifference. Sometimes silence is the acknowledgement that words cannot fix everything. And as I think of our reaction to October 7th, our eighth day, the day after, I cannot help but wonder whether we have been doing a lot more than speaking. Anyone who lives in the 21st century knows that most of our lives when it comes to communicating are echo chambers. We are talking to people who think just like us. And we are sharing our indignation and our outrage with other people who are as indignated as we are. And perhaps the response to all these things is not speaking. There, there's a group of people tonight that shared a mission to Israel with me, and we are going to have a reunion dinner in a few minutes. There's also Rabbi Berkun and Eric and Jaime, who is probably landing right now, who came from another mission to Israel that our synagogue joined together with Magen David Adom. We have led the way when it comes to the response to many of the things that took place on and after October 7th, not by speaking, not by talking. We traveled there. We raised money, we donated two ambulances to Magen David Adom. Many of us walked together in demonstrations organized by the Greater Miami Jewish Federation or other organizations. We posted the faces of the hostages all over the place. We lobbied our representatives. We made phone calls and wrote letters. We made sure that APAC is stronger than ever because we need APAC more than anyone, any time before in the history of the U.S.-Israel relations. And yes, speaking may be important. Sharing memes and reels on Instagram can have some small effect. But I want to ask each and every one of us, not what have you said, but what have you done on the eighth day? What have you done in the face of tragedy? Because the Jewish way of reacting to tragedy is not speaking, it's not saying, it's doing.
I want to applaud all these courageous people that since October 7th had the courage of taking a flight and going to Israel. And you know what? If I have to describe many of the moments, the most important and deep moments of those trips, I have to say that I don't remember many conversations, but I do remember many silences that we shared together. I do remember walking in the place where the Nova Festival took place in Reim, or walking the houses of the kibbutzim that were destroyed and not finding the right words. And I do remember visiting wounded soldiers in the hospital with which we could barely communicate and attending a funeral of a fallen soldier whose language we didn't speak. But it was not about saying. It was about acting. It was about doing. It was mainly about being there. So I hope that this week's Parsha and the presence of people who travel to Israel in various missions with ATJC and on their own inspires those who have not taken the step yet to start planning. Israel is in a state of Shiva and they don't need our posts on social media. They need our presence. They need our money. They need our resources. They need our representatives in DC to act fast. They need the US support to stay strong and they need all of us to be sharing with them the feeling that we are one big family. Hopefully, in the Passover Seder, we will be able to answer with tears, who knows seven, but we will also be able to craft the answer to say that we are eight. Wishing everyone a Shabbat Shalom. We're going to invite all of our children to the Bima as we do every Shabbat. Anyone who is below Bar Mitzvah age, including Daniel, who is officially an adult but still a kid we're going to invite daniel to open the ark for us as we invite everyone to stand and we bless our sons and our daughters with the holy words of the priestly benediction yes <laughs> May God bless you with Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. May God bless you with Ephraim and Menashe and to all of our children. May God bless you and protect you. May God show you favor and be gracious to you. May God show you kindness and bless you with the Shabbat of Shalom, a world of Shalom, a life and a future of Shalom, as we all say, Amen. We remain standing as we turn for page 118 for Aleinu Lechabeh. Shamai, we are the Lord of 
ומושבי קרהו בשמיים ממעל ושכינת זוזו, שכינת זוזו וגורי מרומים הוא אלוהינו עינות הם מפקנו את זולתו מקעקעתו בתורתו וידעת היום וידעת היום ואשבות אל לבבך כי אדוני הוא האלוהים בשמיים ממעל ועל הארץ ועל הארץ מתחת כתוב בתורתך, אדוני ימלוך לעולם בעת. ונאמר, והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ ביום ההוא, היום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד. for prayers for the IDF as well as prayers for the hostages. You can find these additional prayers on the inside cover of the Shabbat program. inside cover of our Shabbat program as we recite a prayer for the welfare and the return of the hostages. God of Israel, our rock and our redeemer, God of mercy, of compassion, we pray, we plead that you return these precious and beloved people, the captured and the missing, who have cruelly and hurtlessly been torn from their homes and carried off to our enemy's territory. We are terrified contemplating their fate, horrified at the thought of the sufferings of the missing and captured who are not yet within our power to reach. And so we plead before you, source of mercy, be at their side, support them, protect them, and quickly bring them back to the embrace of their families and all who love them. As you have declared, behold, I will restore the captives of Jacob's tents and have mercy on their dwelling places. We beseech you, Adonai, quickly fulfill your word. Here I am with you. I will watch over you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. Indeed, I will not leave you until I have done what I have said for you. And children will be returned within their borders. So may be God's will and let us all say, Amen. Those of us in mourning and those observing a yard site remain standing. The rest of us may be seated. 
this coming week, we remember the following Yorkites with love, Frida Bach, Beatrice Basler, Sarah Betso, Samuel Buchholz, Arlene Borland, Beatrice Drayman, Faye Eckhaus, Martin Feuermann, Maurice Gabes, Frida Green, Stanley Castle, Simon Kravek, Lynn Lefkowitz, Samuel Longwill, Dora Mogilensky, Miriam Tauber, Sylvia Wilner, and Hilary Zaid. May their memories be a blessing. We also offer this Kaddish in memory of six millions of our brothers and sisters who perished in the Shoah, and in memory of the fallen soldiers of the IDF and the victims of terrorism. Mourners Kaddish can be found on page 124. It gadal ve it kadash sheme raba. Ve alma divrahir ute ve yamblich malchute. Ve chayechon ubi omechon ubi chayei de holbeit Israel. Baagala ubi zman karib ve imru amen. Yehesh me raba me barach le alam ul el mei al maya. It varach ve ishtabach ve it paar ve it roman bit nase. Vita dar vita le vita lal shmei de kul shabrich u. לאלה, מן כל ברכתה ושירתה, תוש וחטא ונחמתה, דאמירם בעלמא ואמרו אמן. יהא שלמה רבה מן שמיא, וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום ממרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. May be seated briefly. I want to call everyone's attention to the Shabbat program that has a lot of things for you to stay engaged with our congregation, to participate, to do, to learn, to act. So make sure you read through every page. There's information about Pesach, Yom Ha'atzma'ut, the fast of the firstborn, learning, and more. I just want to highlight two things, only two. One, the upcoming gala. Our ATJC gala is taking place a week from tomorrow night. It's themed as the White Night Gala in honor of the White City, the city of Tel Aviv. It's going to be a wonderful, immersive experience with music, with colors, with lights, with everything, with good food, with drinks. So make sure you sign up. It's your opportunity to support what we do throughout the year. We have a thriving congregation thanks to your support. And the gala is one of many opportunities you have, not only to help ATJC, but also to connect with other people. If you want to know more details, Megan is sitting there in the back. You can ask her. The dress code is Denning and Diamonds. I'm still working on my diamonds. So if anyone wants to help, let me know. I have my denims, though. Uh, but that's a week from tomorrow at 8.15 p.m. You need to register and have your tickets. So make sure you purchase your tickets during the week and you join us for a wonderful evening on April 13th. The other thing that I want to call your attention exactly a day before that, perhaps the most important Shabbat of the year. You know that usually the Shabbat before Pesach, we call it Shabbat Agadol, the big Shabbat. For us, Shabbat Agadol is going to be two Shabbats before Pesach. It's going to be next week as we welcome on Friday evening here at ATJC, Luis Har, who is one of the two hostages that were released by a brave operation of the IDF a couple of weeks ago. Many of you may remember, as the majority of us were watching the Super Bowl, a group of soldiers of the IDF and intelligent agents and more people were doing perhaps one of the operations that we will remember for generations. I'm sure there will be movies about that in a few years. And that was to rescue Luis and Fernando, two Argentinian-born Israelis who were released from the hands of Hamas. Luis will be in Miami next week, and he will be speaking from this Vima this coming Friday. And we want, not only because we believe in the importance of listening his testimony, but also we believe in the importance of sharing our love and our warmth with Luis. We want to pack this Sinao. We don't want a single seat empty so that he can feel the love of the Jewish community of Aventura congregated here at ATJC. So exactly a week from today, 7 p.m., we begin services. He will be speaking for approximately 20 minutes instead of the sermon. Not only we all must be here, but bring your friends, bring your family, bring your relatives. Let's make sure we bring the youth, especially young men and women who need to listen to the testimony of Luis. Luis will be speaking in Spanish, I will be translating simultaneously. 
have some patience, uh, but he will be speaking in Spanish, so if you are a Spanish-speaking Jew, you know, another reason for you to come. 7 p.m. next Friday, I'm counting on you not only to attend, but also we are counting on you to spread the voice and let everyone know that this Friday, everyone needs to be here at ATJC. Aharon, Aharon, Habib, I want to extend a hearty muscle tov to Daniel and his whole family. I just want to share one thing because it was so special. Yesterday we experienced a beautiful Thursday morning. He put on the feeling, he said the blessings for the Torah, but there was one moment that I will treasure forever, which was when his grandmother Rosa, a survivor of the Holocaust, gave him a hug after he was called to the Torah for the first time. Because that was what our enemies tried to avoid. That was their goal, to make sure that fast forward 80 years, there's no bar mitzvah celebration. So Daniel, I am sure that this day will gain meaning as you grow up, but the hug that your grandmother gave you yesterday as you were called to the Torah for the first time with your Hebrew name is something that has very, very deep meaning, and we are all blessed to be witnesses of that holy moment. So Masal Tov to you, to your whole family. We are looking forward to celebrating tomorrow at Mincha services at 7 p.m. here at ATJC. Daniel is going to lead the congregation in Kiddush and Hamotzi together with his two brothers in the social hall right after we finish services. So after we finish services, find your way to the social hall. Daniel and his brothers will lead us in Kiddush and Hamotzi. And then if you are part of the reunion dinner, for our Israel mission in January 2024. Make sure you go to the smaller social hall, the Wilner Pavilion. The table is set there for all of us. We're going to meet there five minutes after services conclude. We'll do Kiddush also there, Kiddush and Hamotzi, and then we'll share a wonderful dinner. We welcome Rabbi Berkun back. His voice is a little bit effective and he has an important wedding this coming week. So. He's uh, saving his voice for that, but we are very happy that you are back. We're looking forward to hear from you, from Eric, from Jaime, and from all those who are returning from Israel. Services will conclude singing together Hatikva. I invite everyone to stand and face the Israeli flag. Give them a hug and a kiss. Join us for Kiddush. Shabbat Shalom, everyone.